air gun detectives. Welcome to another episode of Air Gun Detectives. I'm your host, JC, and today we're going to take the mystery out of the Benjamin Trail NPXL. They make this actually in three calibers, 0 0.177, 22, and 25. It retails for around 320 bucks. Before we get into this though, do me a favor if you hadn't already, hit that subscribe button down there in the corner. It doesn't cost you a thing, it's absolutely free, but really helps support the channel. Also, don't forget to check out my website, www.airgundetectives.com. On that site, I've got t-shirts, I got hats, I have the Generation 2 bipods. In addition to that, I do have a limited number of compact scopes that I'm blowing out. Anyway, let's get back to the Benjamin rifle on hand. This one looks a little bit different than the Benjamin you're going to pull off the shelf. And I'll talk about what the little upgrades that I did do to this. But anyway, this is the Benjamin Trail, once again, NP. This is, brake barrel has been actually around for quite some time. In fact, I purchased this one a about nine years ago. So I've had it for definitely uh, for a little bit of time, that's for sure. I think it was back in like uh, 2013, right around there. Anyway, this is a brake barrel. It's got their nitro gas piston in it. In fact, it was one of the first Magnum type uh, brake barrels, i.e. that's the XL, the XL, extra large there. Anyway, it's got a nice ambidextrous thumb hole stock. The overall gun is pretty long. It's actually 48 and a quarter inches, and it has a 19 and a half inch barrel. And it's not light either. It weighs about nine pounds or a little over nine pounds. The stock trigger, this is not the stock trigger. This has been upgraded to a GRT3, but the stock trigger, it had about a five pound trigger pull somewhere around there. The cocking effort on it, it's about 45 pounds right around there, but it's not too bad because of the long barrel, you get lots of leverage with it. They claim this will shoot up to, this one is actually in 0.177. They claim that 177 will shoot up to about 1,500 feet per second. So that's some pretty high velocity. But yeah, as you'll notice, this one, um, obviously I upgraded. This is actually one of the first rifles I experimented with and put the bipod system on it. This was actually one of the first ones. So uh, we've got a little history there. Also, if you'll notice the stock, I've actually sanded this down and refinished it. So with a, with a darker stain, and I also upgraded the trigger. Those are the few things that I actually did to this, but we'll talk a little bit more about that later. But the question is, like anything else, how does this perform? And as I said, this rifle's been around for quite some time and they're still selling it, so that must be a good sign. So let's, uh, let's take it through our various steps and then we'll come back and talk about it. So stay tuned for the next segment. All right guys, let's try our uh, Benjamin, our NPXL here and uh, see what type of velocity we're gonna get out of it. This, this we're gonna use a light pellet on purpose. I say a light pellet, a seven grain. It's gonna break the sound barrier, but let's just shoot five shots, just see what our average velocity is. And then I'll tell you what it does with a heavier pellet, which is a more accurate pellet in this rifle. All right, so we're gonna just do the Diablo Basics or seven grain. Okay. Shot number one. I wouldn't drop the pellet. That's the only downfall with a 177 is the pellets are so small. All right, shot number one, 1236. Shot number two, 1223. And shot number three here. 1224. Great standard deviation though. Okay, shot number four. 1228. And last shot, last but not least. 1229. Very good standard deviation really is. Of course, it does come up a little shy from what the manufacturer claims it'll get. However, with the Barracuda Max, these are one of the more accurate pellets. These are a 10.65 grain. We got 1,018 feet per second on those, and that gave us about 25 foot-pounds of energy. So anyway, there you go. All right, let's move on to the next segment. 
Let's test out our Benjamin Trail XL for a little accuracy here. We're going to go ahead and shoot this gun. This gun puts out such high velocity, in all honesty, in a .177 caliber, it's worthless to shoot anything less than a 10 grain pellet in this. You won't get any accuracy. You got to get that heavier pellet to kind of slow that velocity down a little bit so you can stabilize it so we can try to get some decent grouping here. But we're going to use the uh, Splatter burst, the four inch targets today, I love the way they show the impact points on these, these are great. And they come in this cool roll now, but I'll leave you guys a link down below. But we're going to take five shots, we're going to concentrate on grouping, we'll see how tight of a group we can get. A little bit of a windy day, but uh, we're our usual brake barrel distance, I like to shoot these about 20 yards, just to, in fairness to all the brake barrels, and then obviously when we move to the plinking session, we're going to move out to 40 yards. But anyway, go ahead and take a quick look. All right, let's go ahead and shoot five shots. We're going to be shooting the Barracuda Match. They're a 10.65 grain pellet. Okay. All right. So remember, we're looking for grouping here. And two. And three. And four. And let's do one more. And five. Not too shabby, if I do say so myself. Yeah, these, uh, I've tried quite a few different pellets in this. And like I said before, this thing shoots at such a high velocity, you really got to try to slow it down. But these 10.65s, uh, the Barracuda Max, they work, seem to work really well in this. And we got a windy day, too. So there's a, probably a little less wind, yes. Even a little bit of wind like this is going to definitely affect um, grouping. But not too shabby, I'd say myself. So let's move on to the next segment. Let's test the trigger on our Benjamin Trail. Well, keep in, keep in mind, I upgraded the trigger on it, it's a GRT3, so this obviously is not going to be like what the factory is, but I wasn't going to go and take the gun apart to put a stock trigger back in it because I've had this gun for years, but I'm going to show you what your potential is for a trigger on this. Alright, so we've got our trusty Lyman trigger gauge here. Let's get this. One pound, four ounces. One pound, four ounces. They're worth every penny, guys. I'm telling you, these triggers are worth every penny. Alright, let's move on to the next segment. Now we're going to do some plinking with our Benjamin Trail. This thing is really powerful, a lot of high velocity. And I'll talk about this more at the end. But basically, the 177, 22, and 25 caliber is the same rifle. They just put a different barrel. So in order to get some accuracy at this type of distance, we've got to shoot a heavy pellet. So we're going to shoot a 13.43 grain JSB. This is the exact Monster Diablo. So we've got to shoot a heavy pellet to stabilize this. But go ahead and take a quick look. We're uh, 40 yards plus back. We're going to shoot some little eggs and a shotgun shell there on the end. So let's see how we can do here. Advantage of this thing having a nice long barrel. You've got plenty of leverage to cock this, so it's not bad at all. All right, let's start with the shotgun shell on the right side. All right. 
that's one. But yeah, you got to use the heavier pellet in this, especially for this type of distance. We got a little wind, everything else, because the lighter pellets with this velocity, oh my God, they'll move all over on you. Okay, the red egg. You guys can hear how hard this hits too. And a white egg. And another red egg. You hear how hard this thing thumps. But you know, then you ask yourself, okay, we're shooting a 13 and a half grain pellet. Heck, you might as well shoot a 22 at that point. Anyway, but we'll answer those questions at the end. Okay, last but not least, this white egg. And there you go. That's our Benjamin Trail, your XL there. All right, let's move on to the next segment. All right, let's wrap this up with our conclusion, our Benjamin Trail here. I think this did really good. This is pretty much a classic rifle. It's one of the first brake barrels, the Magnum type brake barrels um, that were produced, and they're still selling it, so that must tell you something. So, but like anything else, let's go ahead and let's talk about the negatives. I have a couple negatives. First off, the, I upgraded this trigger, as you guys can see that. It's got the gold trigger. It's a GRT3 trigger on there. The stock trigger on these things are horrific. It's the old Crossman Benjamin style trigger. Very heavy, not very controllable. Uh, you definitely need to upgrade the trigger on this rifle without a doubt. Also, the stock finish, um, I should say on these stocks, the finish on them, not very good. But the wood's nice. It, it's like, a, I think it's a, like a beech wood, but it's got very nice grain on it. So can sand it down and refinish it and then you can come up with something like this and it's not too difficult to do. Other than that, uh, um, those are my two negatives. So the finish on the stock and the trigger. Other than that, pretty, pretty nice rifle for the most part. So let's talk about the positives. The rifle is very powerful. You guys saw that. But in the 0 0.177, um, it, they claim it'll do 1500 feet per second negative. It does, I tried a lightweight alloy pellet on it. The best I could get out of it was just right or close to 1300 feet per second. But this rifle does not like those light pellets anyway. The 0.177 caliber, you definitely want to go with a heavier pellet, 10 grain and above to stabilize it. So you got to remember, this is the same exact rifle with all three calibers. The only difference is the barrel. 22 caliber barrel or a 25 caliber barrel, or as this one is at the .177. That's the only difference in the rifle, is the barrel in those three models. But I'll talk a little bit more at the end, in my opinion, on something else here. But it's a solid build. The nitro piston on this, I have had this piston the entire time, no issues with it whatsoever. So since day one, it's been working just fine. Unlike, I'll have to say, some of those Hassan Vortex pistons, they're horrific. There, we'll get into that another time, but these pit gas pistons are really good. I've had no issues with any of them. So it's a solid build. The finish on it is outstanding too. The bluing on this is just beautiful. It really is. The rifle also is fairly quiet. It really is, unless you're using a lightweight pellet and then you're going to break the sound barrier and obviously it's going to be noisy. But when you're using uh, the higher or performing pellets, which are the 10 grain and above, it, it's actually pretty quiet. It's backyard friendly. Um, overall, like I said, it's a good build quality. It's a solid gun. It's heavy. Um, I like the fact it's got the longer barrel. It makes caulking really easy. You know, they claim it's around a 45 pound caulking effort. It doesn't really feel like that because you have a lot of leverage here at the end. Good accuracy. You saw we got really good accuracy. Once again, once you find that right pellet, it does well. In fact, Look at that 40 yards. Look at these steel eggs. You can see, um, here's a picture of them, but you can see the impact point on those. That was from 40 yards. That's pretty right on for the most part. 
So pretty good rifle. What I would suggest, however, if you're considering a caliber, 22 caliber would be the ultimate for this. Because if you think about it, the .177, it doesn't do any good with light pellets. So that means you have to go with a 10 grain and above pellet. There's very few selections for that. Luckily, the H&N 10.65s, it absolutely loved the best. But there are some other pellets. JSB makes some. But you're very limited selection. Then again, you go to a 25 caliber, you got very limited selection there. The 22 caliber, if you think about it, those pellets are around the same price as the .177, but you have a huge variety. So ideally, the best caliber in this rifle would be 22 caliber. So how would I rate this rifle overall? It's a proven rifle. That's why they still sell it. I would actually give it, out of the box, four and a half stars. Now, it doesn't take much to make it a five-star gun, and that would be upgrading the trigger and doing what I did with the stock. So that, that's how it would, you could turn it into a five-star. But it's a four-and-a-half-star gun. It really is. And uh, I think you're, you get actually quite a, a value for the $320 you know, for the retail price of what they're going for. So probably worth adding to your collection if you want a powerful brake barrel rifle. That's for sure. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Air Gun Detective. Don't forget, this is where we take the mystery out of the air gun. Until next time, I hope you and your family are getting a lot of shooting in. You're safe. God bless. Take care.